This week, we'll, we will have a look at a history of trade or trade throughout history. This week has only prescribed articles that are uploaded on Ikanva and is not in the textbook. This week, as well as the final week, will give you a taste of what to expect if you continue your studies in economics. As I mentioned in my announcement at the start of the term, you will also be expected to write and read a lot more in this term. The articles are selected to relate to the theory taught in the first term and how these theories can be applied to data. The outline for this week is slightly different to last week. I will give a brief introduction and then move to the three prescribed articles and end with the learning outcomes for this week. As we discussed in week seven, the context in which trade policy takes place is important. We looked at how developing countries used import substitution in order to achieve industrialization. If you read the chapter, you would have seen that it mentions, it mentions Latin America's response to the Great Depression as protectionist, especially Mexico in the case study. This week, we take it a step further and briefly look at how trade changed over a longer period. The first article will look at trade development and ask when globalization started or begins while the second article places the third world or developing countries into the argument. The third article focuses specifically on South Africa's experience with globalization. It is important to note here, economic history, of which these studies form a part, is a new and growing field in economics. As such, these studies are limited and it is especially limited on African developing countries. If you do have questions, you are welcome to contact me for a deeper discussion. You will be expected to read and summarize three published articles with the additional guidance provided here. The first article is written by Kevin H. O'Rourke and Jeffrey G. Williamson. Both are famous in the economic history world. You can see their photos here as well. Both are now retired, but Professor O'Rourke is still associated with the New York University in Abu Dhabi, and Professor Williamson was at Harvard University. The article was published in 2002 in the European Review of Economic History. The European Review is a top economic history journal and has an impact factor of 1.11. You can see the article's full biographic reference here as well. The article has received some critique, and if you would like to read some of the follow-up articles on this one, the first is called Path Dependence, Time Lags and the Birth of Globalization, a critique of O'Rourke and Williamson. And these authors here respond in once again when the globalization begins. When you read this article, here are some guiding questions that you can look for and focus on when you want to examine, critique, analyze, and review the study. First, what is the aim of the article? What exactly is it that they are trying to establish? Second, how do they measure globalization? And which theory that we discussed in the course do they use for this measure? Third, what kind of data does the authors collect and create to measure globalization? Fourth, what are the eras in the article and why did the authors choose these eras? Finally, what is the conclusion of the article and which era is supported as the start of globalization? The second article is again written by Professor Williamson and was also published in 2002. The article focuses on the developing world, then still referred to as the third world. It was published in the Journal of Economic History, another top five economic history journal, and has an impact factor of 
higher than the European Review. The article's title is, oh, you can see the full biographic in reference here as well. The article's title is Land, Labour and Globalisation in the Bird World from 1870 to 1940. As I've mentioned before, the term third world is not really used anymore, but refers mostly to what is now called developing countries and least developed countries. The term third world originated in the Cold War when the OECD countries were considered third, first world, the communist countries second world, and everyone else third world. You may also come across terms like north and south, where the North is considered developed and the South underdeveloped. For discussion, you can see a link in the notes on these terms. Before we move on to the questions, just have a look at the title and think about the Heckscholen model that you, that you learned in the first term. Look at the terms used in that and the terms used here. Then, when reading the article, look at the three regions that the author discuss, discusses as on the periphery or on the outside at the time. Again, what is the theory taught in the course that he uses and how does he adjust the model? That, that is, what assumption does he change? How does he measure terms of trade? And what are the conclusions made by the author with relation to the relative factor price convergence and wage rental convergence? And how does this relate to the third world? Note, if you feel uncomfortable with the term third world, please use developing countries. Finally, how does he explain price convergence for the third world? The third article focuses specifically on South Africa and is written by two professors at the University of Stellenbosch, Willem H. Bosov and Johan Furi. As I mentioned in the introduction, there are relatively few studies on Africa's trade history. This is one of them, published in a local journal. As you will see, it was published in 2017 in the Journal of Studies in Economics and Econometrics, whose, which impact factor is only 0.1. Five. Some questions that you can focus on when you are reading this article is what is the definition of globalization that is adopted by the authors? What is the motivation of the articles? Why did the authors decide to write? Why can the authors only start measurement of prices in the 19th century and why did they choose wheat prices? When do wheat prices from South Africa integrate into the global economy? And what additional measures do the authors use to check if the data is correct? What are some of the reasons for South Africa's integration and which other productions are used for the test of inter for in and which other products are used to test for internal integration? Finally, what are the conclusions? about internal integration and globalization in South Africa. In order to analyze, critique and review studies, you should also think about what are some of the limitations of this study, but also the previous two studies. Finally, our learning outcomes for this week. There will be no test yourself quiz on ECUMBA this week. For your learning outcome, you should read, analyze, and review the prescribed articles using the questions provided here as a guide. Also, write summaries of the articles as a test. In your final examination, you might be expected to review an article or revise con conclusions from these articles. You should be able to organize, contrast, and arrange these articles in different ways.